Hi, Aaron here from Hammer Performance. Welcome back to our shop. Today's video is going to be on doing a conversion and making more power than what you would get from just a basic conversion. Um, this is really a follow-on to the previous uh, video, which was the basics of doing a conversion. So if you haven't watched that one, please go ahead and watch it first, because I'm going to kind of build on some of the information I presented there. Okay, so just to review that real quick, um, basic conversion basically means that it's done with stock 883 heads. This is a stock 883 head sitting here. Stock 883 has a three inch bore, therefore the chamber diameter is three inches and uh, a 49 cc chamber at, uh, um, uh, with a flat top 883 piston gives you a nine to one compression ratio. When you do a conversion, the best way to do it is with one of these pistons. Conversion piston has a dish in the middle, gives you a 10 to 1 compression ratio with a 3.5 or 3.9/16 or 3.600 bore. The big, big difference between a 1200 head, as shown here, and a 883 head is that this chamber is 3.5 inches in diameter. It's also deeper, 67 cc volume. And uh, uh, when you take that size of a piston and you put it underneath this chamber, then you have to have the dish in the piston to control the compression ratio. Okay, so now what happens here is that we have tons and tons of customers that buy these pistons in their 1250 or 1275 kit, do a basic conversion, they're thrilled with the power, right? Because it makes such a huge, huge difference. I mean, you're going from a stock 40 to 45 horsepower 883, do stage one stuff as well as the 1250 or 1275 kit, and you're gonna have as much as 80 horsepower. A carbureted bike might be you know, in the 70s, but some of these uh, injected bikes are hitting 80 horsepower. So it's a massive improvement. And it's a, a, a huge, huge bang for the buck. And so that's why they're so popular. It's our number one best-selling conversion kit by a big, big margin. But what happens is, guys do that conversion, they love it, they ride it for a year, they ride it for two years, they come back to us and they say, okay, I'm used to the power, I want more now, okay? Most of this video is gonna be really about answering that question. How do I get from a basic conversion to a higher power conversion? Uh, but this is of general interest to anybody doing a conversion because there are fundamental differences between a high-performance conversion and a basic conversion, and we're going to cover those things here. Okay, so since you know the difference in these chambers, a couple things jump out. Um, number one is because the valves had to fit inside of this 3-inch diameter chamber because you're dealing with a 3-inch bore, uh, Harley, when they designed this head, they had to get the valves to sit closer together. Well, the valves sit in the same locations, and they sit at the same angles, 27 on the intake and 31 on the exhaust, but they had to get them to fit into a, a smaller circle than they did with this head, right? So how did they do that? Well, what they did um, was two things. Number one, they made the valve stems themselves longer. This is something a lot of people don't realize is that 883 valve stems are longer than 1200 valve stems. That since the valves are at an angle to each other, when you make the stems longer, the valves get closer together, and that, that helps them fit it within the trench chamber. The other thing they did is they made the valve head diameter smaller. Those are the two big things that they did. Both of those things cause a problem, though, when it comes to making power. I mean, you're, you're now talking about putting this head over a three and a half inch to three 600 bore, something in that range, and you need bigger valves, and what's more, you need more overlap in your camps. But because of the way they've designed this head, everything is crammed together into this small little diameter chamber. We want to take advantage of that bigger bore to get bigger valves and more overlap into the camps. So I'm kind of um, blowing past what overlap is, but it's a really, really important subject. And I'm going to digress here for just a little bit and talk about what overlap is. Um, let me uh, stand this head up a little bit. I've got a couple valves here that I'm going to slide into the guides. And we're going to talk a little bit about overlap. Overlap is such a critical, critical parameter of a set of cams and really of, a, of an entire build that it's worth it to discuss this just a little bit. So let's say that this engine is on its exhaust stroke. On the exhaust stroke, the piston's coming up, right? Exhaust valve is hanging open like this. Piston is coming up on the exhaust stroke. Exhaust is rushing out the exhaust port. And as the piston gets closer and closer to the top dead center, I don't know if you can um, see that, the valve starts closing, right? It has to, it has to get out of the way and the exhaust stroke is almost uh, done, so the valve needs to close anyway. 
But a curious thing happens. Before the piston gets all the way to top dead center, the intake valve actually starts opening. As we proceed towards top dead center, the exhaust valve continues to close, the intake valve continues to open, and the piston reaches top dead center. When the piston starts going down, the next stroke is the intake stroke, right? Both valves are still hanging open, believe it or not, and the exhaust valve is still closing, so it finishes closing. Meanwhile, the intake valve continues to open, and you draw in fresh air fuel mix, right? That period of time between when the uh, exhaust valve was closing, but not all the way closed, and the intake valve started opening, that period of time when both valves are open at the same time is called overlap. And overlap is a really, really important factor in making power. And I'll explain why. Um, when both valves are hanging open like that, basically your exhaust system out here is connected to your intake tract, right? Whether it's a carburetor or a manifold or whatever, or a throttle body or whatever, there's fuel sitting in that unit. There's fuel sitting in the, the manifold. There's fuel sitting in the port ready to go. If, while both valves are open, the exhaust system can present a low pressure wave, in other words, a suction, it'll actually get that intake charge moving before the piston even reaches top dead center, before the piston even starts going down. That gets the intake charge moving, gets you a head start on the upcoming intake cycle. That head start um, greatly improves cylinder fill. It's a huge, huge opportunity for you to improve cylinder fill. More cylinder fill means more torque, more torque, of course, means more power because power is just torque times RPM. So we want overlap in the cams. This setup with uh, the, the longer valves and the valves closer together doesn't allow a whole lot of overlap. That's the whole issue. Because the valves are, are longer than they are in the 1200 heads, you can get into trouble real quick with piston to valve clearance as soon as you start throwing more overlap into the cams and opening those valves farther uh, during TDC between the exhaust and the intake stroke. Furthermore, if we make the valves bigger and we try to put overlap into the cams, what happens? Well, the two valves can run into each other, right? You've got to have a minimum clearance between the valves during the overlap window. You can't let them run into each other. And, you know, we have to have some number of thousands of clearance in between them. So both of those things are obstacles to making power that the 883 head presents to us. Um, let me talk just a little bit about what to look for on the cam card, the spec sheet for the cams, when we're talking about overlap. Um, this is a, a cam card from one of our most popular cams, the Impact 560s. This number right here is the number of degrees before top dead center that the intake valve starts opening. So while the piston is still going up on its exhaust stroke, the intake valve starts opening at 28 degrees with this uh, set of cams. Then you go through top dead center and the piston's going down on the intake stroke. This is the number of degrees after top dead center that the exhaust valve closes. So from 28 degrees before top dead center to 28 degrees after top dead center, you've got both valves open. Add those two together, you have 56 degrees of overlap, which is a, a pretty uh, common high performance number. Race cams will often get well into the 60s. Uh, milder street cams may only be in the 20s. Uh, 56 degrees is a good hot street cam. The other set of numbers here that I want you to notice are this column over here. So when it comes to making power, you really look at these two numbers. But these two numbers here basically follow those numbers. This is how far the intake valve is open when the piston is at TDC on the top of its exhaust stroke before it starts its intake stroke. This is how far the exhaust valve is open. So you can actually open the valves to those specs and you can see what the clearance is between them and make sure that you have enough. And that's something we do on every set of heads we prepare. Okay. And furthermore, the higher these numbers are, the more likely you are to have piston to valve clearance issues as well as valve to valve clearance issues. What you'll find if you study cam specs is the bigger this number, the bigger this number tends to be because they're, they're closely related. You look at these two to evaluate how much overlap the cam has, but really for uh, figuring out clearances, you mainly look at these two. Okay? Okay, so we've established that everything is jammed close together. We've established that because the valves are longer, you have less valve to piston clearance and, and the valves are, heads are closer together, so you have less room for bigger valves, less room for overlap in the cams. How do you solve these problems? Well, they can be solved, and the way that you solve that issue is that you 
relocate the valve inward. Basically, you sink the valves in their seats. We call it valve sinking. And when you sink the valves like that, because again, they're at an angle, you're moving them farther apart. You're also moving them farther from the piston. So it, it helps you on both of those things, allows you to run more overlap. This head is a prepared 883 head. So both of these chambers started out looking the same way, right? This chamber used to look like this one. But this is a sledge head. We have an inch 980 intake valve and an inch 610 exhaust valve. So these are quite a bit bigger than the uh, inch 575, inch 350 that come in a stock head. To make those fit and to have enough room between them and have enough room between them and the pistons to run the 560 cams, or in this case, these are actually prepared for the 600 cams, we had to sink these valves considerably farther in the seats. If you notice that these valves are, are sitting much, much uh, more outward than these are. And that's how we get the room. And you notice that it no longer fits within a three inch chamber. Where this one is designed for the 883's three inch bore, this one is designed for a 1250 or a 1275. This work of sinking the valves um, and unshrouding around them, that's the removing this material around the perimeter of the valves to improve the low lift flow, which you have to do after you sink them because otherwise you'll wipe out the low lift flow. Those things necessarily make the chambers larger. Okay, when you make the chambers larger, what happens? Your compression ratio drops. Now, your conversion piston no longer delivers the compression ratio you need. And this, you know, you're putting in cams that may require 10 and a half or 11 to one to work well, and yet you've got a piston that started out as 10 to one over a 40, or under a 49 cc chamber. This chamber, you know, because the valves are so big, we had to take it all the way out to 79 cc's to make that work. So really you need a new piston design. That's where this piston comes into play. This is a 30 degree piston, and if you notice, we've machined both sides of the chambers at 30 degrees to match this uh, 30 degree dome on the side of this chamber. So th this piston um, closely matches um, these uh, angled squish band cuts, creates an angled squish band with actually more surface area than you would get running this piston with this chamber. So this is an improvement in squish band surface area, improvement in chamber turbulence. And furthermore, because this dome has more volume than this dome, you get your compression ratio back up to where you need it to run the bigger cams. So, as you can see, when you try to move from this style of piston with this style of chamber to here, you basically, you've got to change the piston as well. If you are going to try to keep the chamber size the same so that you can continue to use this piston, then you've got to stay mild on the combination of valve sizes and overlapping your cams. You can't get crazy. And guys do that, don't get me wrong. But, you know, if you're going to do, a, if you've got a bike that's 80 horsepower and you do mild head work and mild cams, you may pick up 90 horsepower. It's not, you may get up to 90 horsepower. It's not like when you went from, you know, your 40 horsepower 883 to your 80 horsepower 883. It's not like that at all. You're not going to feel that huge, huge addition of power. So uh, if you want a big, big increase in power, then basically what you need to do is this, and that involves a larger chamber. Now you will find shops that tell you that they can build on this without changing the chamber size. And um, all I have to say to that is ignorance is bliss. I mean, if you don't check the clearances, if you don't know how much piston to valve clearance you're gonna have, if you don't know how much valve to valve clearance you're gonna have, sure, you can throw big cams at it and you can throw bigger valves at it or some combination thereof. And you might get away with it, you know, because everything has a tolerance stack up. There, there might be situations where you do get away with it. But I'll tell you what, an awful lot of pistons have come into this shop looking like this one. If you notice this piston, this is a reverse dome conversion piston, notice the shiny spot at the bottom of that valve pocket. This was run with a set of cams that had too much overlap for a stock 883 head and it was run with stock 83 heads, and that's what happens. This causes noise. If it's bad enough, it'll cause you to bend the valve. So, you know, in this shop anyway, everything goes out of here with proper clearances. So it, you know, having, having half of our stuff work and half of it not work would be totally unacceptable. For that matter, having 90% of it work and 10% of it have a problem, that would be totally unacceptable. We, uh, we couldn't stay in business that way. Everything that goes out of the shop has to be right, and everything gets checked. And to do this right and make more power we've got to sink the valves and, and that allows us to, uh, to run cams that have a lot of overlap. Overlap is a key, key ingredient to making power. If you're not going to put overlap into, into your cams, you're not going to have a lot of, of power. It's that simple. Okay. So we do, however, have a solution that 
uh, lets you avoid buying a whole new engine kit when you do this. That is that we offer this piston in a plus two oversize. So we can take your existing cylinders, we can hone them out, fit up this piston, and get you to that level and at least save you the money on the, the cylinders. You're still going to have to buy new pistons if you're going to do any kind of serious performance work. Um, so that's the basic rundown of what it takes to make more power. Now obviously there's more aspects to making power than just the preparation of the heads and the selection of the pistons and cams. But those three components, the, the pistons, the cams, and the head work, they have to be very carefully matched. Um, and there's, there's really an infinite number of ways to do it. You, know, you can run more overlap and, and force yourself into smaller valves. You can run bigger valves and force yourself into less overlap. There are things that we do in the piston design to accommodate the valve sizes and, and all that we use. Um, so really all three of them are designed together. And we uh, obviously control the head work. We design our own pistons. We have them manufactured our specs. And we design our own cams and we have them manufactured our specs. So we're controlling the combination. How you make all those trade-offs in between overlap and valve sizes and piston design is collectively that's called the combination. And how that combination is done has everything to do with how much power you make, how you make all those trade-offs in, in choosing overlap versus valve size um, versus piston design. And uh, obviously we try to take the guesswork out of that for you with all of the uh, performance conversion packages that are documented on, on the website. If you go to our tech tips section, there's uh, articles, just a couple down from the top, uh, on converting your 883. Inside of that article, we have documented packages that are proven uh, to make 80 plus horsepower, 90 plus horsepower, 100 plus horsepower, 110 plus horsepower, 120 plus horsepower. These Sledge 883 heads, by the way, are the ones that are used in the 110 plus horsepower package. So we've worked out the combinations. We've designed all of the components around them. A lot of this stuff is really like threading the needle. I mean, we, we do things so precisely in terms of how those three components are matched. You know, it's one of these things, don't try this yourself at home, because that's how we get the power. We push everything right to the limit, but we don't step over the line. And if you try to configure things yourself, you're, you're either going to have a clearance issue somewhere or you're, you're going to leave power on the table. It's, it has to be done very, very precisely when you're talking about 83 heads in particular. Okay, so that's the overview. Um, and don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to us on YouTube. Thanks a lot.